The beginning of healing is to clean the colon. Colonics TV. As you talk about inside out beauty, three or four days they can make a big turn. It is all about adaptability. Join us each episode as we examine a sacred and holistic therapy dating back to the ancient Egyptians. Together we will meet countless individuals who are exploring colon hydrotherapy for themselves. That's one area that colonics really could have oh, such oh, impact. God, yes. And seeing firsthand how this therapy, when added to a health regimen, can help minimize a broad range of symptoms and even help reverse a number of common illnesses. Find out what your doctor simply doesn't know and therefore isn't telling you and why the outdated and misguided arguments against colonics don't hold water. Colonics TV. Colonics TV. Tune in to Colonics TV if you're ready to maximize your health from the inside out and from the bottom up. In the allopathic conventional world, we had no answers for people with chronic conditions. We know a lot about what kills you. When you're near death, there's nothing like modern medicine. A bullet wound a heart attack in the moment, that's easy. What causes heart attacks? Well, we're still very confused on that. In medical training, there really isn't any education about preventive health. Most would say health is the absence of disease. Well, health is not the absence of anything. It's the presence of something, the presence of the ability to regenerate, rejuvenate, and procreate. Since they can't define health, they can't help restore you to it. Naturopathic physicians historically are really, really good at treating chronic health problems, especially the health problems that the allopathic medical establishment is not that good at. They don't have cures for it. They have palliation. They have ways to keep you operating, but they can't get you better. So we become really good disease managers. You don't have time to really appreciate the subtlety of the complaint. You look for the, um, the magic word. They're not talking about health. All they talk about is you have hypertension, you have diabetes, you have kidney failure. We have to get rid of this thing. Well, it is not a thing. It's a process. It's a restorative process that the body's engaged in. So rather than start with a disease and say, how are we going to control the symptoms or how are we going to you know, keep you functioning? I want to know what is at the root of this. What are the stresses? What are the dysfunctions in the body? What are the underlying factors that came into play that took this person from healthy to not healthy? Chronic disease, what I call vertical illness, people are still walking but they're not in good health. The amazing thing about the body is you can feel so miserable and have normal blood tests by the regular physician. MDs, are, they're seeing horizontal disease. People are sick, they're in bed. We see vertical disease. People are walking but they're not well. Many times they've tried the standard or even the alternative therapies, but they still stay ill. If someone came to you with arthritis in 20 years, they'd still have arthritis, but now they'd be on 10 drugs. We see a subset of people basically who get toxic and get sicker when they're being treated for often these chronic infections. Some of the people I see are on many, many medications. I've seen people on as many as 15 or more prescription medicines when they first come to see me. And the hallmark of most of them, not all, but most of them, is chronic constipation. The digestive tract, as many of us now know, is the source of a tremendous potential for either health or illness. Well, the immune system has two basic functions. It's the Department of Defense and it's the Department of Maintenance. Now, if it's too busy with maintenance requirements, cleaning up toxic spills, it doesn't have the resources for defense. And that's ultimately what happens to everyone is that their immune system is overwhelmed and they can no longer defend themselves. It's all about balance. There's two things going on. One is the body is engaged in a restorative process. And number two, the cells that are being replaced are being replaced with inferior products. Viva Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! One of the first things I have to impress upon them is that what is going on 
week in and week out, year in and year out for decades is definitely having an impact on your health and setting you up for either health or illness. Once I impress upon them that what has been happening over the years is so important, then we can move into how to change the situation and how to begin to allow the body to get rid of what it's been wanting to get rid of for all these years. If we understand that the body is always engaged in restoration and repair, so we, we turn over 30 billion cells a day approximately. Okay, that's a lot of work. Well, that's a lot of work. Now that means these 30 billion cells are recycled, it's called apoptosis, and 30 billion new ones have to be made. Well, they're going to be made out of whatever you've put into your body and also of what hasn't left your body. So if you've got accumulation of waste and you've put in the wrong things, you, the, the next generation of cells are going to be inferior to the one before. Their cellular functioning over a lifetime, it's okay, and that is called degeneration. And we call that aging. It's not aging. Now there's a lot of research showing how toxicants imbalance the immune system to make a person more prone to allergies, asthma, and autoimmunity, and less able to fight off infections. Tissue functioning, which is organ functioning, which is the body's functioning, is deteriorating. And what I teach is environmental medicine, how the buildup of toxicants from every day, our air, our food, our water, all of which are polluted, build up in little bits every day and lead to chronic illness or unwellness. So if you had a condition last year and you have that condition this year, it's because you're continuing to produce it. Knowing that is very empowering because it says, if someone comes up to you and says, look, this is going on with you, and they give it a name. Okay, fine, I'll stop doing that. If we can get rid of that disease model, that disease is an entity or a thing that gets in you and it's going to harm you, and understand that everything the body's doing, it's doing it out of wisdom, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of nature, and that wisdom is to maintain homeostasis, balanced, optimal functioning and balance. What is constantly both amusing and um, discouraging to me is that when people come to see me, the discussions I have with them about their health, including their digestive health, have never taken place in any other medical office. Generally the people who need treatment for these infections are people who have toxic livers. If we can begin to engage in this discussion about optimizing digestive functioning and optimizing the use of the colon and the importance of the colon, it will gradually create a shift. You reduce the toxicant load, their asthma and allergies get better, their autoimmunity gets better, they're able to, to get an immune system that comes back and starts to fight things again, and the basis is just cleansing. Because healing requires that there be no waste to take care of so the body can use its energies and its efforts in healing. That's why we say that fasting and cleansing heals. Guess what? Every creature on planet Earth that's still connected through instinct fasts when it's sick. That's what they do except us. They'll eat something, they didn't study herbology, but they will go eat an herb that will cause them to either have diarrhea or vomit and clean out their DI tract. Once they've cleaned it out, then they go and lie down, they just drink water and they rest and they heal. That's what healing is. How do we know that? We don't have to do an experiment, we just observe nature. That's what nature tells us. And nature's not selling us anything. Whereas if I read a book that someone wrote, they're selling me something. What I've seen when people have had colonic irrigation is they can really notice some improvements. We have to attribute to something. Why are they getting better? Because we do see that people get better from a series of colonic irrigation. Let's say you're smart enough to stop eating at 5 p.m. and you go to bed at 9 or 10, which means you're going to get a good six to eight hours of healing. The only time people usually have that condition is probably the last three or four hours of sleep. So if you've got a colon full of feces, those toxins are being absorbed and put right back into the liver. It's called auto-intoxication. And that puts people into a whole other world of toxicity. In basic physiology, we learn in medical school, it's called the enterohepatic circulation. When the digestive tract is absorbing toxins, they'll get shipped over to the liver and then the liver will become overburdened. You just keep reabsorbing whatever toxins your body Body gets rid of. And the problem with the word toxins is that when I was in medical school, toxins was a dirty word. It's imprecise. It means anything. So when conventional medical doctors say that there is no such thing as auto intoxication, that the body is not reabsorbing toxins through the colon, what is your response to that? Um, 
Well, that's like saying to me that gravity doesn't pull you at 32 feet per second squared. I mean, to me, it's a fact. That's what the colon does. And that accumulation of toxicity and burdening of the liver will set us up for an immune deficiency and all different types of medical problems. You remove the toxicant, it's totally cause them. Treat the cause. Why do they have that chronic infection? Is it because they're deficient in echinacea or vitamin C? No, it's because they've got an overload, a burden of environmental intoxicants. The family of illnesses that is the biggest slam dunk for cleansing and colonic irrigations is the main focus of that, is autoimmunity. I see absolutely every type of clinical picture except for a dire emergency. Everything from skin problems, psychiatric problems, digestive problems, female problems. I have had the whole range of autoimmunity. That's my, my best slam dunk. Clinically, I take these people with chronic health problems that are in such hurt and do this weird treatment, colonic irrigations on them, lupus. Chemical sensitivity, bad chemical sensitivity, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic nasty rheumatoid arthritis. I do colonics, they get better. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I do cleansing and colonics, they get better. Chronic Epstein-Barr, chronic cytomegalovirus, Lyme's disease, which is the big one now, Candida, which has been big for a long time. I just see people who have very sluggish bowel activity and they notice a difference when that changes. You know, I teach here to the students and they get to see the benefit of colonic irrigations turning patients around who've had chronic illness. People become actually kind of almost inspired that, oh, maybe that's been my problem all these years. I refer to my practice in Seattle as the caboose on the train of health. People came to me after they've been through every other car that medicine had to offer. And then it came to me as a last resort in natural medicine. Whenever I can en enlighten someone to look at things in a new way and start to get an idea of what needs to change so that their health changes, that's always a, um, a major triumph. A clean colon and an empty stomach and an empty small intestines allows the body to heal. I get all the the complicated ones and usually it's just let's do cleansing remove the cause and the body will heal itself